Welcome, ladies and gents. Chris Andre here. You can find me at BetBoxing on Twitter, or you can subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications button and get a new notification whenever a new video is uploaded. Let's talk boxing. You know, on this channel, often we will put quite detailed technical breakdowns and we love to talk about the themes of the day, but we also like to intellectually engage with some of the deeper questions of life in the way they revert, relate to boxing. In this particular case, we want to talk about psychology and the human psyche and focus on Alexander Usyk. This is a man who is a former Olympic gold medalist, winner of the Super Series, undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world and the new unified heavyweight champion of the world. And he has achieved all of this without tasting defeat and without any controversies. There haven't been any dodgy decisions that have gone his way. There haven't been any catch weights that he's used as a tool to weaken an opponent. There haven't been any question marks about what he has consumed in a bid to enhance his performance he has done it the hard way on the road often facing warriors that are loved by the home crowd and potentially having to overcome a deficit on the scorecards before the fight the, the opening bell has even begun that is who Alexander Usyk is and even if they've wanted to rob him they haven't been able to as he's been so convincing and in order to achieve that you have to have an incredible amount of mental strength. He is a paradoxical personality, in my humble opinion. And we'll get to that in a moment. But one thing you know he has is extreme self-confidence and belief. And you can see that in this photo here. For me, this is one of the great photos of the sport. It's probably my favorite ever boxing photo, to be honest. I don't think there's a photo that would get me more excited. You can just see the current unified heavyweight champion of the world, a beast in the ring, sitting on the throne, so to speak, the metaphorical throne, looking out into the shadows at the gate of the fortress as he sees a new warrior approach ready to invade and their eyes locked. It's almost like a western or a medieval tale of a warrior seeking to take the throne of a king. There's tension there. It's such a fantastic photograph. And you can see the self-belief in his eyes. He's not intimidated, and I'm sure neither was Joshua. But there is no intimidation here. He wants those titles. And on the night of the fight, there was still no sign of nerves or a lack of belief. While the rest of the world was saying, this guy's too small. He's going to get walked through. A lot of people were saying, the thought did not cross Alexander Usyk's mind. As the crowd in this terrific arena put Anthony Joshua on a pedestal and hailed the hero, Usyk was a man on a mission. And he did indeed put in a masterclass, and via that masterclass, he was able to secure the unified heavyweight championships of the world. And yet, there are still some unanswered questions about him, aren't there? There are a lot of people in the West who might not know that much about Usyk. So let's explore some of this paradoxical personality. He is, in many regards, a man of hard discipline, and yet he's playful. He's a man of staunch faith who cloaks himself in humility and yet he oozes an unwavering confidence and unshakable self-belief. Tyson Fury is also paradoxical, but with Fury it's different. With Fury there's a chaos there. You know that he's contradicting himself. One moment he'll make one comment about an opponent's showing and display in a fight. The next day he'll speak about that same fight and he's trashing it. One minute he's ultra confident or he's buzzing, he's really happy, he's over the moon. And the next minute he's down in the doldrums and he's talking about, you know, getting knocked out so he can just walk away from the sport because he's had enough. That's Tyson Fury. And that too is fascinating. That too can be a weapon because it can keep guys guessing. I'm not undermining Tyson Fury's lack of balance. It can act as a weapon for him. But with Usyk, there's a balance there. There is no contradiction, even though everything is a paradox. It's unusual. But let's begin, and you'll see what I'm talking about. This isn't going to be a this-is-your-life type of show where I'm going to sit there talking about how this guy has gone through X, Y, and Z in his life, and let's bring on some old-school celebrities and stuff like that, and let's make him cry. But it is more to show you where the basis comes from for this paradox. He's playful yet focused and all these things. Where does it come from? Well, he was born in Simferopol in the USSR. And he came from a poverty-stricken background. This is all too common a story in boxing, but it must have been particularly difficult for him. You know, he was a toddler when the USSR fell. His father worked in the military and his mother was in construction. So when you consider that the family were directly impacted by the fall of this nation they would have come into some very difficult times. And one of the misconceptions that occur is that Alexander Usyk was somehow a boxer since his very tender age because of the advanced skills that he has. This is actually not true. The truth is, he actually started football 
judo and folk dancing way before boxing as a kid. And the reason he actually got into boxing is because although he was playing football when he was a, a child and playing in the youth team of a top division Ukrainian side, his parents simply couldn't afford him to continue that pursuit. Football obviously has a whole bunch of costs, whether you're talking about football boots and shin pads or whether you're talking about the petrol involved to go to away games, especially in a big country like the Ukraine. They simply couldn't afford for him to continue football. So he decided to join a boxing gym and the wife of the boxing gym's manager actually sewed some gloves for him or re-sewed them so that they could fit, fit his hands. And he was 15 years old at the time. Now, this was in 2002. And just as a little side story here, you know you, how you hear a lot of people say Korobov dealt with Usyk in the amateurs and, and Sean Porter stopped him in the amateurs. Well, Sean Porter did not stop him. Sean Porter himself said that he rocked him, he, he, he stiffened his legs. And had it been a real fight where it wasn't near the end of the round, maybe he feels that he could have jumped on him and gotten him out of there. But that was only four years after this. So you're talking about a 19-year-old who had only been boxing for a short period of time. So in the same way that you can't hold it against Anthony Joshua for being stopped by Dillian White, for argument's sake, in the amateurs when it was only his, you know, he was early in his career of, of putting on the pair of gloves, you can't hold it against Usyk. Four years really is nothing when you're trying to establish yourself as a boxer. It's just night and day from what he is today. That's just a little side note there. And while we won't go into his achievements in this video, I'm sure you're all aware of them by now, we've already listed a lot of them. What I do want to look at is the various aspects of his mindset because they are multifaceted and this is where they can appear contradictory. And the first area I want to start with is the athleticism. This guy's a terrific athlete and how that's married to his warrior mindset. First and foremost, it is important to note that he is potentially the best athlete in the heavyweight division. He might not be the biggest, but as an overall athlete, the man is quite sensational. The things he can do can defy logic. There is this consummate equilibrium between physicality and balance and coordination. It's really quite stunning. He's under foot 17 stone. He's not far from it. He's six foot three. And the things he does, he shouldn't be able to do. To put things into perspective, after the fight against Anthony Joshua, Eddie Hearn informed us that AJ was so shattered, the reason he didn't stay back for a post-fight interview is because of that. He was too tired. He was exhausted. And Eddie Hearn wanted him to speak to a doctor. Well, in the meantime, after this 12-round hard fight, Alexander Usyk was doing a Ukrainian folk dance whereby it involved him squatting very low towards the canvas and jumping up to do sidekicks before jumping up to do the splits. And this was on multiple occasions. This is the level of energy he still had left in his legs. The guy is an incredible athlete that has incredible feet. I mean, you look at these dancing videos, for instance, you just focus on his feet, the balance, the coordination, and the way he marries that with upper body movement. It is exceptional. And what he does is he feeds this. So he has this naturally. This is just God-given. This is in his genes. But he feeds this with an incredibly intense training regimen. You could just see this sort of scene being in a Rocky movie. You half expect Sylvester Stallone to be the one to pan up close to the camera. He goes through extremes to put his body through the test in order to maximize the natural gifts that he has in coordination, in speed, in strength and power, physicality, all the attributes where he brings them together to create what is a perfect athlete. Of course, he is not the best at every one of those things. He's not as physically strong, for instance, as Derek Chisora, but he has enough strength there. He has enough power in his punch to marry it with some of the other exceptional attributes that he has. Look at this stuff. It's circus type stuff. Think of the balance and coordination needed to do that. It's absolutely incredible. And so as a result, what you have is a man of extreme discipline who is very much in touch with the concept of becoming the consummate warrior. And what he will do is hark back to eras of yesteryear. A lot of people used to argue about, not argue, but they used to discuss why does Alexander Usyk have this terrible, terrible haircut, they used to call it. Well, it was essentially him trying to get into the same mindset as a Cossack warrior, a warrior of his people, as you can see from this photograph here. Now, he once gave a story of an anecdote. He spoke of the goose and the wolf. 
And he explained that this is what constitutes being weak and being strong. What does it mean to be weak? What does it mean to be strong? Well, he explains that the goose, when it gets injured, its first port of call is to fly back to the rest of the flock. But what if it got injured or is being chased by a predator? Well, it's now led the predator to the rest of the flock. So because of that goose's own cowardice, it will sacrifice the entire family. Whereas the wolf, Alexander Rusik explains, leaves the rest of the pack. It abandons them so that it will draw any weakness away from the pack. It's about self-sacrifice. And that is how Alexander Usyk sees himself, a leader, a leader of men, a leader of his family, a man who is standing as an athlete for something greater. He sees himself as having a destiny, so to speak. And this is why he has always pursued these fights as a road warrior and why he's never shirked a challenge. There's a fantastic interview on Counter Punch Boxing News, which you can go and find, where he's added subtitles to, where Vladimir Klitschko and Vitaly Klitschko are on a panel and there's an interview with Usyk, who's also there, and he's basically saying, and I believe this is from 2012, right? I believe he's saying that when the time comes, he doesn't want the Klitschkos to duck him. He wants a shot at those belts, at either one of the two men. This is something he was calling for. This is a guy who, according to Johnny Nelson, was lighting up Vladimir Klitschko in sparring. And he was not about to act as though he was in awe of these great heroes of his nation. He wanted them. He wanted to take them out. Fearless. That's who Alexander Usyk is. And so where does this fearless concept come from? Where does this idea of being the way he is come from? Well, a lot of it actually stems from his faith. Now, unfortunately, as you've had to see here, I've had to blank out some words because algorithms can be triggered. Even if you're having an innocent conversation about certain topics, this is the world we live in. Make of that what you will. But as you can see, he this was at the start of what had transpired 18 months ago, which has led to our entire way of life being changed. And he came out and said, the worst thing we can suffer from is sin. Someone says that you need to postpone going to the temple and everything else. It's all nonsense, my friends. Go to church, take communion, confess, and everything will be fine. This is where he gets his stoic personality from. He goes on to say that every day in prayer, I ask the Lord to give me wisdom and humility. No matter what heights I reach, I will not exalt myself. I am a simple person. This is how Alexander Usyk sees himself, and you know that there is truth to it. And nonetheless, despite this unwavering, unshakable confidence and belief in God, this idea that nothing negative will befall me if it is not God's will, and if it is God's will, then it will happen regardless of what I do, is central to who he is. But that also gives him an incredible amount of self-confidence. As you can see in this next article, he says, I pray the enemy will remain healthy before each battle. Now, I want you guys to think about what this means. Of course, I'm sure he prays for himself and his family as well, needless to say. But think about what this means. While the rest of the world is telling you that Anthony Joshua is too big, he's going to blow this man away, he's too big, he's too strong, Usyk's not big enough to go and deal with these big heavyweights, he's going to get creamed, he's going to get walked through. Not only is he saying, no, that's not going to happen, he's out there saying, please, my heavenly father, keep this man safe because I know what I'm capable of doing with your help. Think about that, the way he encloses that aggression of his with humility, but it still betrays a level of self-confidence. So how did he come to this level of faith? Even that's somewhat of an inspiring story. When he was a little kid, like I said, he grew up in this poverty-stricken background. He was in hospital and he was apparently very ill. And he speaks of a time when a priest visited this children's hospital and he gave all the kids some sweets. And Alexander Rusik says, and I quote, all the kids ran around not realizing that this tall man with a black beard and a big cross on his chest had just come to save our sinful little souls. I sat near him and asked where God is, how to come to him, where he lives, how he sees and hears. And the priest said to him, you're still small enough. Why are you so interested in God? And Usik replied, I'm going to see him very soon. And the priest, taken aback, asked, why did you decide that? And Usyk replied, I heard my mum's conversation with the doctor who told her that I was very ill. Now, think about what this child would have been going through. 
while the rest of children, the majority of children are living a healthy existence and playing around, he's having to confront his own mortality. That alone is going to create an element of, well, trauma, firstly, and then potentially emotional strength in a child. And the priest replied to him to reassure him, only God will decide whether you live or die. And Usyk said from this time, he began to resort, and I quote, to our Lord Jesus Christ and follow him. He does not follow me, but I go after him. Every day I say thanks to him for an ever greater day. This is the mentality of Alexander Usyk. And to show that this isn't some sort of fake faith, because a lot of people will profess something that maybe they believe in culturally, but I don't want to say the word hypocritical because we're all sinners, right? Every believer out there will tell you this. And I'm not trying to preach any particular faith. There are Christians here and Muslims here, Jews and atheists, Buddhists and Hindus. We're just talking about the mindset of Alexander Usyk. But the fact of the matter is all human beings are sinful. We all have our limitations. So I'm not being critical here for anybody that might not be living by the word of the faith that they believe in. But there are some people that simply will say it for a cultural reason you know they're they're faithful by culture they don't actually believe this doesn't apply to Usyk as many of you are aware the Ukraine and Russia have had some serious conflicts in recent times and the church the orthodox church in Russia faced a potential split when the Ukrainian wing of the church threatened to break away and that was for political reasons not religious reasons there was no difference in religion it was just the case of it being political they saw it as a breakaway for for nationalistic reasons and Alexander Usyk seeing this felt that there was a, that would have been a schism in the church and he stuck with the Russian Orthodox Church because politics is one thing and faith is another and this led to many Ukrainians branding him as a traitor so in the face of public pressure he still stood by what he believed in so again this shows a level of mental and emotional maturity and strength additionally to that though Alexander Usyk is not just a man of extreme faith but through that root also comes a tenderness he's a family man he is incredibly in love with his wife and i want to read you this particular instagram story because it could come straight out of a romantic novel but the reason that this is relevant is because on the day of the unification fight it was his 12th anniversary and this is what he decided to message rather than like some other fighters who try to put out the persona of being tough guys you know they come up to to gangster rap music or heavy rock and they're trying to intimidate an opponent that's not alexander Usyk. in an attempt to make it a little bit more palpable palatable for the english speakers out there because google translate often doesn't do the perfect job does it i'm going to try and make it a little bit more understandable what he says is I am without you and I breathe differently. Without you, sometimes I have the longing of tears to scream like a fierce beast and to cry. I am completely different without you. I'm silent. And often when I'm in a crowd, I raise my eyes to the sky, looking for your eyes. I close my eyes for a moment and imagine that I am breathing with you. I wish to be with you alone. I cherish you and only you. And I know that in this world, I am good if I'm with you. I mean, what a beautiful romantic thing to put out there. And I know a lot of you are going to sit there and think, that's so cheesy. But that's his wife. And it's only cheesy. Romance is only cheesy when the person doing it is doing it for the sake of trying to be romantic. You get the feeling that that isn't the case with Alexander Usyk. You get the feeling that this is genuinely who he is, a traditional family man who's extremely in love with his wife, with his family. And he treats fatherhood in a similar way. You know, he, there's a tough love there. There's a lawful lot of affection, but he, he always says you must lead by example. And there was one example I saw myself, which I found very funny. He saw his son fall over and pretend to start crying. You know that thing that kids do where they fall and they look up, they see their parents and then they think, oh, and they start crying, right? Usyk had realized that this was a fake cry. So he told his son to just get up. No validation, just get up. His son wouldn't get up. So he told him a second time. And he gave him a little nudge, just as his son was trying to sort of semi get up without much oomph. He gave him a little semi nudge and his son couldn't really get up. Finally, his son stopped crying, clenched his teeth, so to speak, and got up. And at that point, Usyk pulled him in, gave him a big cuddle and kissed him on the head. He was teaching his son, don't be weak, be strong, be a big boy, be a man. And the moment he showed that level of strength, that emotional strength, he gave him love and affection. 
This is the sort of person that Alexander Usyk is. He is sensitive yet strong. He's traditional and he wants to lead by example. And yet he is also very, very playful. He's a joker. And he's so funny that it can translate to languages he doesn't even speak. So my question is this, does this guy have the consummate mentality when it comes to being a fighter? What I'm particularly interested in is how do you get to Alexander Usyk? How do you get underneath his skin? I'm not asking about how you beat him, that's different. That's what you would do in a boxing ring. But when you consider Usyk in comparison to other top level fighters, psychologically, he seems to be strong, doesn't he? I mean, let's consider it. Anthony Joshua, while he is a fantastic fighter, there are question marks about when the going gets tough, how does he react? Why didn't he take risks against Usyk? Why didn't he throw caution to the wind? Yeah, he might have got knocked out, but are you not going to give everything you've got in a bid to hold on to your belts? There is, of course, also Deontay Wilder, who you have to ask questions about his mentality. We won't go into that. Everybody knows, and that's been covered in depth by a variety of people. Tyson Fury, he does seem mentally very strong when he's on it, an incredible amount of self-belief. But we know that there is an instability to his emotional welfare. How do you know that one day... Tyson Fury is not going to be going through a bad patch and as a result he's not going to train properly come into any given fight out of shape and get knocked out it will cost him there is an instability there whereas with Usyk not only is there a perfect balance in this paradoxical personality that he seems to have but there seems to be an incredible amount of mental strength so how do you approach getting under his skin do you put it on him do you remain humble and just focus on the fight do you joke with him do you show him that you're not bothered by him what do you do one thing I will say, I will leave you with this to contemplate. Although he comes across like such a nice guy and he's very, very focused on his faith and his family, and I have no doubt that he is a really nice guy, don't assume that he is not capable of engaging in psychological warfare of his own. When Tony Bellew referred to him as a superstar, Alexander Usyk made a point of saying he's not a superstar. And when asked why, he said, because stars fizzle out. In other words, I'm here to stay. I'm not here to fizzle out. Well, fast forward to the fight against Anthony Joshua, and he refers to Anthony Joshua as a superstar. Make of that what you will. Thanks for watching, everyone. Chat to you soon. Take care, and God bless. Well,